Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Build Computers. Uh, today is a special episode because this computer that we're building is my new gaming PC, so I actually get to keep this one for once, instead of most of the stuff that we build here that is going off to customers and clients. Um, so let's do a quick rundown of what equipment we've got here. Um, so it's a mixture of new and old. We'll go through the old stuff first just to get that out of the way. Um, I'm putting in my old GTX 960 because I'm waiting for the uh, GTX 11 series or the 20 series or whatever it's going to be when it eventually arrives, I don't know. Either way, I don't want to buy a 10 series card right now. Um, my uh, RM650X um, that's come out of my existing computer, too good of a power supply to leave in my old computer, that's going in this one. Uh, then in addition to that, uh, we've also got my old two terabyte hard drive is going in there. Um, and that's about it for the old stuff, I think, actually. Um, so moving on to the new stuff, we've got um, an i5-8600K, we've got a Z370 motherboard, that's the Gigabyte Aorus Ultra Gaming, and there will be a separate review, review video of that motherboard, which I'm quite excited about, so stay tuned for that as well. Uh, then we've got um, some DDR4 going in there, uh, we've got a Crucial MX500 500 gig SSD going in there, and all of this stuff is getting packaged into this MZXT H500i case, which there will also be a separate video on as well. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking. All right, so we're going to get the motherboard in place, then the power supply, and we're gonna go from there. So let's make a start on that. Right, IO panel in. This is a nice IO panel for this motherboard actually. It's not illuminated or anything like that, but it has a nice padded back panel on it. And I like it when they have these. It just gives a nice finish. It makes it feel premium instead of one of those just stamped tin plates, which is really what they are. But it does, it just feels a bit more quality. And it's always a good sign for me when, a, when I get an IO panel with the motherboard that looks like that. So I'm a fan. Let's get that guy plugged into the back. Done. Right, now, how are we looking for standoffs? Let's get you guys lined up. Let's just drop in straight into place. It's so, I love these, I love the way that NZXT just pre-plumb all of the cables in these things. Normally I'd be having to hold things out of the way and all the rest of it, but I just literally just drop that motherboard straight in. And all of the standoffs are good straight out of the box. I don't have to do anything. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. It's the thing. I was I was thinking of build of building like my own custom case and doing something exotic for this build. And in a way, I'm kind of glad that I just decided to go, whatever, I'm just gonna buy NZXT everything. Because it's good. It just works. It really does. Right, we need some screws. These screws are a bit naff. They've got very narrow heads on these screws. Let me show you a close up of this and just show you why I'm actually not gonna use these screws. I'm gonna dig out some different ones. So this is what I refer to as a hex headed screw. That's a sort of a stereotypical hex head Phillips screw with uh, that's an imperial thread on it. So the 632 thread. So this is also the imperial threaded screw but see how small the head is by comparison? And it looks very neat and tidy. However, after putting that into the motherboard, and these are the ones that the case has come with as well, I might add. As you can see, it doesn't really fit the hole very well. I don't like that at all. Whereas, you know, the hex head would be right onto all of those grounding points. So I'm actually gonna take that screw out and I'm gonna get my own set out. The case has not come with any decent hex head ones. It's come with four for the power supply, but that's it. So we're actually gonna ditch those and I'm gonna use my own screws, I think. So, right, let's swing this guy around. There we go. Right, so let's have a quick look through these cables. Mm. Gotta check what's staying in the back here. Ugh. Right, okay, so uh, fan controller stuff power to the smart controller, USB 3, then we've got multiple, oh, that's HD audio and USB 2, that's fine, and, ooh, nice, ah, finally, someone has integrated the front panel connectors. Instead of having all the individual noodly ones, someone has just, you know, NZXT has just said, all the motherboards have the same front panel header on them now, let's just do a single block connector. 
hooray, it's only taken as long as I've been building computers for, which is about 20 years. Anyway, okay, that's fine. Um, so let's get our power supply fitted so we can start seeing where all these cables are going. That can go in the bin pile and I need a power supply. Okay, right, power supply. This is my existing box, my RM650X, which has come out of my old computer, which is going back into this one because there's nothing wrong with it and it's a banging good power supply. Now I need to check what I'm gonna need. So we've got a couple of odd bits connected on this one. That's a Molex chain, we don't need that. We don't have any Molex in this. Get out of here, obsolete connector. Uh, right, 24 pin ATX. Um, CPU power. GPU power, good, that's a single chain, that's fine. And a single SATA connect connector, which unfortunately, oh yeah, we do need that. That's gonna power my hard drive and the case stuff. So that's all fine. Right, right, in it goes. Cool. We've got nice huge cable void down here. There's no obstructions, there's no strut bars in the way or anything like that, which is what you see on like the Corsair cases. So that makes life much easier down here. Right, okay, so CPU power, that's gonna be going up there. And then we've got this lovely cable channel down the side of the case here that I can zip tie that all into and that will just be perfectly out of sight. It'll look great. Cool, so that's fine. Okay, so let's get the power supply screwed into, pla into place. Just loose fitting all the screws, so now I can just give it a bit of a wiggle, as we say on this channel, and make sure everything's seated properly. Here we go. Right, and I'm not going to zip tie this in quite yet. We'll leave all the zip tying until afterwards when we're certain that nothing needs to come out and be reordered again because sod's law and all that. Um, so that's that. Then graphics power. We do have a graph. We do have a, uh, a an extension for this guy. This is mostly going to get buried. This cable. So I'm going to try and put that at the bottom of the pile because we'll have a braided extension lead which is this guy here. That will be the final cable run up to the graphics card. And as you can see, that's got nice individual braided lines on it. So that'll look super swish. And that's gonna be an extension off of this cable. So we're gonna have gallons of this thing. So I'll be coiling that all up at the bottom before it goes in for the last time. Um, so this guy, that is gonna go over, and I'm gonna bury this in the hard drive cage because that's gonna be where the hard drive goes. Sadly, I do still need a hard drive in this thing. I can't afford to go fully SSD. Right, now, what am I gonna do about this? I, I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna take out some of these um, fan cables. What is this all connected to at the moment? I think there's a lot of wires here that don't actually need to be there. Because my, my, uh, my fans are all gonna plug into the motherboard or the water cooler. So I won't be using the smart fan controller for its intended purpose. Right, okay, that's our top fan. Um, okay, yeah, that can stay there for a sec because that's just a fan. That's the back fan, that can stay there. And okay, yeah, so this is a breakout cable going to fan number one, so we'll take that out. That guy's coming out permanently. It's just an extension. Cool, okay, so now, my uh, my ATX lead, I've got an extension for this as well, which came in in the nick of time. Now the problem is, the problem with the braided uh, extension on my ATX lead is it's gonna mess up this cable channel, which is what happened when I last built in a, uh, um, a H200i, which is the baby version of this case. So I'm just gonna plug that in the other side. Right, let's just loose fit that. So that's gonna come out there. And then that wants to go into this channel now, but these channels are great when you have one of these for this big thick loom. However, for braided cables, it just doesn't work. If you're using individually braided cables, this channel just does not work. And that makes me sad. 
I had to take this out the last time I saw one and I want to use it. What should happen is that, in, in, in short, that's how it should be. And as you can see, that works just fine. However, the braided extensions don't work. They look brilliant on the last couple of inches, but they're a nightmare to tidy these things. However, I take the trade off because they look spectacular on that last two inches where they connect to the motherboard. Whoops, that's a drop screw. We'll find him later on. But the nice thing about these NZXT cases is they come with all of these gadgets, but you can remove all of the bits that you're not using. I'm surprised at how many pieces this thing is in. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Could I just leave in part of it? If I just left in the mid part, so I had just a single point there, a hold down point there, that might work. We'll take the bottom out, or, yeah, we'll take the bottom out and then we'll put the centerpiece back in. I think that might have been done deliberately, and if so, that's actually really cool, because you can take out the bits that don't fit your cable mount system and put in the bits that do, and you can kind of just, like, cobble something together. And I'm a big fan of cobbling bits together like that. So let's grab that. Ah, screws. Screws everywhere. Put that in there. We'll just put in one screw for now, just to check if that's working. How's that look on the other side? That's visually perfect on the other side. If I can just feed that in a bit better. Will the side panel close on it? I think it can be trained to. I could do with this being higher up. I think that's fine though. Ugh. Pull you up and get you connected. So now that can just go straight into the bottom. Yeah. Like that. So that's nice and neat. And that, it needs a cable tie there. There's just nothing to hold back against. I'm going to leave that. I'll come back to that. We'll see how much of a problem that is later on. Right. What about these other cables? LED, that's fine. Power, that's going to plug into there. We'll do that last minute. Uh, so front panel, uh, HD audio. Uh, right, USB, where's my USB 3 header? That's up there. So that needs to come up there. Can we get that into there? We could, but I'm not going to. I'm going to actually put that in like that. That'll work nicely. So let's open this up to get a fold in. Yeah, that's, that looks all right, I'm happy with that. Cool, right, what are you? That's USB, that's for the smart device. I'm gonna leave this guy flapping in the breeze and we'll find out more about that later on because there's something else that needs to go into that wire as well. So I'm just gonna leave that loose. And what are you? That's PCI, um, so let's connect up my PCI extension. So firstly, I'll pin this guy back to keep that, well, no, I don't, I don't need to zip tie that at all. Let's just plug in the extension and then we'll just bury all of it. So that's gonna be buried down the bottom, coiled around like that. Whoop, there we go. Right, so there's our graphics cable that I've just run coming up. So that's gonna go bam into our graphics card. Then there's our front panel connector. So let's push, let's uh, get this guy threaded into place. HD audio goes in like that. There we go. Okay, right, so that's that. So ATX lead is in place. That wants, a, this wants a comb on it just to get all of those, all of those braids perfectly aligned. So again, this is, that's a comb there, that black bit. And as you can see, it just keeps all of these braids perfectly aligned up, so they just look perfect all the time. So I need to get another one of these to stick in there, and that'll just keep all of those wires perfectly aligned, and it just looks spot on. Let's get the CPU power lead in. I don't have a braided extension for this, but it really doesn't notice, so I'm not fussed. Ugh. 
This is difficult to fit in from here because we've got a fan right in the way. Uh, I think it's time to drop in the CPU, CPU, RAM, and the SSD. And then we'll do a bit more finicking around the back. And then, well, actually, you know, we'll do all that. We'll get the water cooling in, and then we'll do all the cables at the back. Because the cables at the back will all need to be rehashed when the water cooling is in. So there's no point in doing them right now. Right, CPU socket open. i5 8600K. What is that? Three. It's 3.6 standard, but that this guy will boost right up to like 4.1, maybe 4.2 gigahertz. So this will be a pretty swift processor. The i7 was another 100 pounds. The budget wouldn't stretch. As much as I would have liked to have put in a uh, 8700K, just couldn't afford it. Um, and I was like, I'll take the trade off for this for a slightly lesser CPU in exchange for being able to afford all of the shiny bits and all of the other little extras like a 500 gig SSD and things like that. So in goes our SSD. And likewise, it's a crucial MX500, not a Samsung Evo, but it's still a decent SSD and it's got the capacity. And what I like about these new crucials is, unlike some of the other um, cheap brand SSDs, actually looks fairly swish. I think that looks quite nice in there. Whereas, for example, I've got a Western Digital Blue in my uh, shop workstation, which is the one that we're recording on. And um, uh, and the Western Digital Blue literally looks like a Tesco value brand SSD. And it makes me sad. Like I'm, I'm going to show you these guys because it annoys me that much. So this is the shop workstation that we're streaming from at the moment. And Look at that Western Digital Blue SSD in there being all Tesco value. It's just like, really? It looks, it looks kind of naff in there and I need to do something about it. And it makes me sad. Whereas the Crucial by comparison, you know, that guy looks really, that guy looks really cool. Much nicer. In goes the RAM. Kingston HyperX, cheap and does the job. As much as I would love some fancy RAM. I want the RAM that all of the show computers have. It's made by a company called uh, Geel or Geel. That's G-E-I-L. And it's got RGB along the top. And it looks fantastic. It's really, really slick RAM. But it's also very difficult to find. And I think the last time I saw it, it's about twice the price of bog standard uh, DDR4. So HyperX RAM. Tried and tested. I've got I've got HyperX in like all of my computers. It just works. It does the job, and it's slightly cheaper than the Corsair, uh, the Corsair Vengeance LPX, which is the other good budget choice. Cool. Right. That's the RAM done. Um, okay, let's start doing some cooling. So we've got to get a bit more serious now. Now the big lumps go in, and then once we've got the water cooling in place, uh, we can start making sure that all the cables around the back are super tidy. Graphics card is gonna go in last of everything because that's literally just a drop-in job. So we leave that out to the very last moment. So let's shift everything around again. This one is the dream as well. I've adored this water cooler from afar for a very long time. However, for a very long time, the NZXT Kraken series has been, um, it's been about 40 pounds, well, 30 or 40 pounds more expensive than Cooler Master's equivalent. So, sorry, not Cooler Master, Corsair. So I've always gone with the Corsair H100s because they're just as good performance and they're significantly cheaper. However, uh, the price of these Krakens have come down now and this thing is, I'm, I'm just going to straight up say that as far, in my professional opinion, this is the prettiest uh, all-in-one water cooler money can buy. It looks absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't seen one before, you won't understand until you see this thing turn on. And when it turns on, you'll understand. You'll get it. Ugh. And if you want to, you can uh, jump on NZXT's website now and have a quick preview of what it looks like when it's switched on. But trust me, it looks amazing. And it's what I've always wanted. Okay, we've got a couple of fans. Nice NZXT, uh, what are those, static pressure fans. You can spot, I'll show you a thing. 
you, there are two types of fans, for those of you who don't know. There's airflow fans and static pressure fans. So this is an airflow fan, this one's static pressure. You can tell the difference because the static pressure fan, as you can see, has fewer but bigger, broader blades on the rotor. And this means that it builds much higher air pressure, which makes it very good at blowing against a, a heat sink or a radiator or something like that. Whereas the airflow fan, this is designed for just raw throughput. It has, uh, it will have a higher cubic feet per minute of throughput, throughput of air, and it has a longer range, so the throw of the fan is longer. However, it's less effective if it's up against a solid surface like a heat sink or a radiator. So you want static pressure fans on your heat sinks and your radiators, and your case fans, you want to be these airflow ones for shifting air through the box. So that's, uh, that's what's going on here, and that's why you'll notice that some fans have got lots of thin blades, and some of them have got fewer fat blades on them. Yeah, I like the water cool. Water cooling is good for two things. A, it looks cool. Uh, and B, with water cooling, you can maintain, you can maintain, um, water cooling has a very, very high heat soak value. So it takes a very long time to warm up the cooling system. And that means that your fans will stay slow and quiet even under load. Whereas air coolers saturate much faster. So you get more noise out of them when they're on load. Um, so, however, realistically, there's not a huge amount of difference. I do it mainly for aesthetics, truth be told. In terms of performance, I think air coolers are totally fine. Uh, right, there's our radiator. So we're gonna build up. Let me see what we're gonna do. We'll carry on unboxing all of this and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. That can stay in there. We need the mounting system. God, there's so many fittings for these things. Okay, so to mount up our radiator, we need to remove this front bit here. Uh, again, as I've mentioned in the review of this case that will be following this video, the front panel of this case is not removable. So instead, this bit here comes out with a bit of jiggery pokery. And now we're gonna mount up our water cooling rad on this, and then we slot the whole shooting match back into the case, which is very unusual, and I'm not sure how much I like it, but I understand why they did it. So, okay, so when I'm fitting water coolers, my normal method is to go uh, case, radiator, then fans. However, I'm now following the new meta, which you see in uh, a lot of um, the promotional pictures, which is to go case, fans, radiator. And that's, so the fans are hidden from sight and you just have a wall of radiator fins instead, which I do think actually does look nicer because it means you're not looking at the back of the fans because these are nice looking fans. However, you just have that on show and it's cooler. It looks more swish to just see that wall of radiator fins, I think. So yeah, it's also more handy for cable tidying because where these fans are going to be hidden from view, I can put them, I can arrange the fans upside down so the cables all will come out at the back of the system, which will be easier for cable routing later on. So let's just, so let's just sort of position everything. Right, and let's just get a couple of these in place so this all holds in place. So looking on the back of the plate, obviously we've got multiple rails. So there's our 120 mil uh, mounts, which we're gonna be using. If I had the uh, Kraken X62, that would be a 280 millimeter radiator, which is dual 140, and then I'd be using these outer rails. But I've got the slightly smaller one, and the bigger one was only 10 pound extra, but it was unnecessary, you know. Um, if I had an i7, I might go for the bigger one, but on an i5, 240 mil rad, completely fine. You really don't need the bigger one. Um, I mean, I've got a 240 mil water cooler on the on the streaming computer next to me. It's fine. I rag that computer and it's fine. So if anyone's just like, no, 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 you need 280 millimeter radiators, you don't. So ah, let's get that through there. Let's try and get two of these in at the same time because then this will stop falling apart in my hands. Right, I've got to line up a hole that I can't see. And 
my screwdriver is on the other side, lean around. One, two, there we go. Right, we'll keep those loose because this can actually slide up and down. Okay, and we're just going to trial fit this. Now, being an NZXT water cooler in an NZXT case, you would imagine that it would fit perfectly. However, past experience has told me that that might not be the case. So we're just going to uh, put in one of these screws and just see how that looks. Okay, well, that's all right. So this, cap, this whole thing can move down slightly. However, at the moment, there's a slight gap underneath it. And I like there being a slight gap there because A, it means that cables can go under there if I need to. And B, it means that it's not gonna rub or rattle or buzz or anything like that. If, if you have the option, you just want little gaps around things just to make sure that everything is seated nicely. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that out and screw those in for good. That's, that's fine as it is. And in case anyone's wondering, the uh, the front of the case does have filtering on it. So uh, don't worry about these not being filtered. Um, the air getting to these fans has already gone through dust filters, so that's not going to be a problem either, which is good because one of the disadvantages of mounting, your, mounting it this way around is it's harder to get past these fans to clear because the dust will gather underneath the fans, which is always a problem. So this is the harder to clean option. However, if your case is properly filtered, which mine is, that shouldn't be an issue. Right, so as you can see, where I've deliberately turned the fans around, these two cables come out the back of this assembly perfectly. And where can I put those through? I think I can poke those through there maybe. Can I do that? Let's find out. I can, that's perfect. Let's get those thumb screws done up. There we go, so those cables are coming out there now. So um, the water cooling pump itself will have the area that these guys connect to. So that's gonna come out up here somewhere. So we'll bring those round and we'll have them all just sort of congregate back here somewhere. We're not gonna get the super cable tidy pawn at the back here, I can see that coming now, but um, I'm okay with that. I'm going, to move, I'm going to move this guy though, that doesn't need to go across there. Let's take that out. Let's unplug that. What is that? Oh, that's only a three mil. Oh, there's a three pin fan. Oh, weak. Oh, rude. The case fans it's come with are three pin fans. And that means they're definitely coming out. I ain't putting three pin fans in this case. Three pin fans are noisy. And I don't want them in my shiny new computer. So we'll leave those disconnected because those will be coming out. Don't need those in my life. The problem with three pin fans is that you can only voltage control them, which means you can only bring them down to approximately 30 or 40% before they cut out, which means it's almost impossible to get them truly silent. And I am a stickler for noise with computers. I want silence from my machine. Okay, that's fine. Let's start unwrapping all of this. We're gonna put it, uh, uh, we put the back plate on. I can do everything else while it's laying down. So back plate, that's this guy. Let's get that in place. That works though. Let's take this fan out. Cause I think if that fan is out of the way, that's just gonna fit. I think that's gonna solve all my woes. Spin it round. Let's get this fan out. Right, that should pull through because it's unplugged. There we go. These are bog standard fans that come with the case. They're okay, TM. Good, not great. All right, now the only problem is now is that this dust filter just falls out with no fan holding it in. So I'm gonna leave this out. I'm gonna figure out a way of just like gluing or something. You know, I'll find a way of just holding that in place up there once we're all done. 
Not going to fuss over that right now, though. Okay, second attempt at the water cooler. So now this guy's out of the way. We've got a lot of extra headroom up here. So that's going to go in. I've got to bully these hoses into position. That's a thing. How on earth did I have this oriented just then? It must have been like that. That works. Yeah, there we go, that'll do. I think we got it. That's that's not under strain. And just those hoses just going whoo straight out. That looks good, I'm happy. Put these guys in. So these are like giant standoffs that I'm screwing in at the moment. Look like that. And those go into the back plate that we put on the back of the motherboard. And then they give me these posts that I can screw the head of the water cooler down onto. Right, now this bit comes off. Whoop. And in it goes. How does I have it? I have it like that. go. That's good. I can almost let go of this and if you can let go of it while you're fitting it then it's happy. Whereas if you can't let go of it because it's going to go Ugh, out of the way then you might not have it in a great angle. For the NZXT ones anyway. The Corsair water coolers have got viciously stiff hose pipes on them. They've got huge like what are they quarter inch? No half inch hoses I think. The, the Corsair ones are obnoxiously huge and it's just unnecessary. Now speaking of annoying though, one of my screws is under all the pipes. Can I get the screwdriver down there? I think I can. Yeah we're okay. Right, annoying USB cable. We'll get to that in a minute. Right. This is the uh, wiring harness for the fans and power to the pump. Also requires another SATA connector. It can come off now. Can you see what it is? Yeah. Okay, right, where is the connector? It's on the top. So this guy's gonna plug into the back of the head. Not sure which way up it goes, so I'm gonna try one way. And of course I got it wrong the first time. Let's try the other way. which doesn't click in very confidently, but I know it's in there. Right, now I'm going to tuck this wiring harness right down to the board now. And go around there. And go around the back of the uh, post and just get down into the VRMs on the motherboard and go off the back in the back corner there, just so that harness just disappears. That's largely invisible. Now there's one more cable that I need to run. That is the uh, USB cable, because this guy needs a USB connection for management. That guy just plugs in like that. And again, we'll have this guy duck straight down the back. <clears throat> and with a bit of luck, it will reach where it needs to. Though it's not particularly long, this cable, and it needs to be longer, I think. Right, since the graphics card is in, we may as well just plug that in as well. Now we're here. There we go, power line to the graphics card. That graphics card has a bit of sag on it. There's not much I can do about that at the moment. I will probably figure out, I'll probably figure out a strut brace for this graphics card at some point because that tiny sort of centimeter or so of sag is gonna annoy me. I will, I know it's there, I will see it's there, and I want it to be like that. So, but I'm gonna sort that out in time off camera. 
Right, okay, we're done on this side. Let's flip it all over and get all the wires around the back done. And then I think we're ready to power this thing up. Right, so now I need my hard drive in there so I can get this guy plugged in. It's a two terabyte, two and a half inch drive I use for this. So we're gonna plug him, or rather we're gonna sit him. Hmm, this three and a half inch dri drive cage can take three drives itself. And the rails on the bottom here do actually allow it to slide back and forth as well. So you can adjust the positioning of it. Do do do. Uh, right. That needs to go on there or in there somehow. Uh, so I'm going to put it there ish, I think. Mm. Have we got any two and a half inch screw holes here? Not really. I'm supposed to put it in one of the two and a half inch ones, but the problem with the problem with putting it in a two and a half inch mount point like this is it's a pain in the ass to get the uh, to get the cables to it. The S the uh, serial ATA cable isn't too bad, but getting a power cable to here is really annoying, um, and I hate doing it. So I would rather get him out this hard drive. Because I'm not worried, as long as it doesn't fall out, I'm not particularly concerned about. What about upside down? That works. Putting it upside down at the top of the cage there, we've got a nice clean screw hole there to hold it in place. And you can mount these things with a single screw, because I'm a baddie and I do it all the time. So I need a metric thread screw. And we're going to get them out this hard drive. Now we'll put that in nice and tightly. There we go. Bam. Dunzo. That's not going anywhere. And because it's mounted right next to the connector, that's nice and firm for when I plug stuff into it. Just drop you back in there. And where are the mounts? There they are. Right, okay, so this guy now. Get that back into place. Oh, that cable's fallen way out of position. I'm gonna have to do some wrangling here. Now that guy's gonna go up to here. To the smart fan, con the LED controller power, which I've put the wrong way around. That goes in there. And then, last stop on this little train is up here to this guy, which I think we can. Mm, can we cut across? Can we cut across there? I think we can. I think that's legal. Where are we going to put them? We're going to put them across there. That's fine. That'll then flatten out when the side panel goes on. So that is all fine. That's all hunky dory. That is slack, and I'll actually tuck that in there. That's fine in there. That's okay. That's just an air void. So that's fine. Cool. Right, and that leaves us with just these two USB cables. I think we're ready to close up. Have I got any bits left over? Oh yeah, I've got the air fan. I'm gonna put the air fan in just for show at the moment. 
I'm not sure if it's staying in or not. That's this guy here that I showed you guys earlier. This is an RGB fan. However, I don't have the controller for this. However, once I've got this guy all up and running, I'm going to try and see if I can bodge compatibility onto the motherboard with this fan. So we'll find out how that goes. Um, but we'll put it in just for show for the sake of looking complete. And I'll worry about that later on. So let's get that guy around the back. Dunzo. All right, now we flip it over and cable tie everything down. Oh. Whew. Almost finished. Okay. Power at the back. Power at the front. Is it going to post for me? Do -do -do. There we go. We've dropped straight into BIOS. Okay, watch this, RGB Fusion. You want pink, you got it. There's pink for you. Well, it's kind of purple, actually. Or we can go rainbow color cycle. So we start getting all of that luscious color. Look at all the RGB, it's beautiful. And check out that water cooler. That is all RGB as well. That little color wheel, you can make that any color you want. You can make it dance any way you like. It's glorious, I love it. Beautiful. Even my PCI Express slots light up. It's beautiful. All right, and the build is done. There's still a couple of tweaks that I'll be doing to it off camera. Uh, this fan is not lighting up because I don't have the correct controller for it, but there'll be a follow-up video explaining about that and what I'm going to do about it. Uh, the short, long the short of it is there's no way I'm buying a NZXT Hue Plus just to make one fan light up. Uh, however, in other news though, I'm stoked about how this one looks. Um, I was originally going to try and do some kind of blue lighting setup with it. However, after I just set everything to just flat white, I looked in there and I, my first impression was, oh my god, it's full of stars. You know, we've got some soft lighting from above, but we also have all these twinkles coming from the motherboard that I've chosen here. And that's just resulted in this beautiful moonlit interior, which is kind of what I wanted, but I didn't think it would look like that, but I love what I'm seeing. So we're gonna get some tweaks in. I'm gonna dial in some animations to the lighting just to really bring it to life. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.